Hey y'all, my name's Jim Metcalf. I'm one of the attorneys here at the shipyard. Our office is composed of my boss, Kate Demain, two other attorneys, Mike Torres and Omari Jackson. We also have Vicki Sanderlin, our paralegal. Our number is 396-8625. And please, call before you do it. We can really help you out if you call us prior to doing what you're thinking of doing. Today we're going to talk about gifts between federal employees. This means gifts like me giving my boss, Kate, a gift, Kate giving me a gift, or me giving one of my fellow attorneys like Mike or Amari a gift. One thing I want to let you know is that the ethics rules apply to you 24-7 no matter where you are. A lot of folks at the shipyard think that when you leave the gate at the end of the day, the ethics rules don't apply. That's not true. The gift rules and all the other ethics rules apply wherever you are 24-7. So today what we're talking about is gifts between employees. The general rule is employees may not, absent an exception, directly or indirectly accept a gift from any lesser paid employee unless there is a personal relationship that justifies the gift or and, and, key is the and, and no superior subordinate relationship. So basically what that breaks down to is when you're getting a gift from another federal employee, you have to think of two things, money and chain of command. All right, so you have to think of whether or not the employee handing you a gift is in your chain of command or whether the employee handing you the gift makes more or less money than you. The key though is to really concentrate on the chain of command. So let's start with a couple of examples. I'm going to create a mythical code. It's code 9XXX. All right. That might have one X. Here we go. XXX. All right. So in 9XXX, the superintendent is Lisa. All right. By the way, I apologize for my artwork. I'm not very good at it. All right, below Lisa is Bob. Bob is the supervisor. All right, here we go, soup. And then below Bob is Jim. And Kate, that'll work. All right, so here we have our chain of command. Now, let's pretend that it is Bob the supervisor's birthday. Let's pretend Jim wants to give Bob a gift and he wants to give him a good gift. Let's say the gift he wants to give him has a fair market value of $20. Can Jim give Bob that gift? The answer is no. The reason being is, if you want to give anyone in your supervisory chain of command a gift, it has to be a terrible gift. The reason being is the max value of that non-significant event gift is $10 or less, and that's measured by fair market value. So if Jim or Kate want to give their supervisor Bob a gift for his or her, or for his birthday, they have to give him something that is, has a fair market value of 10 bucks or less. So what's that mean? That means like last year for Christmas, Kate got from my boss, Kate, got from me a card and a thing of hand lotion. That's an insulting gift, but it's a good thing because it complies with the rules. Furthermore, if you've worked outside of the federal government, I've worked for a boss who expected $1,000 gifts from me, that's a, that's a tough thing to do. And uh, in the private sector, it's okay. They can expect any gifts they want. But in the federal government, we're covered by great ethics rules. So your boss cannot expect any good gift from you. If it's your boss's birthday, the max value of that gift you can give is $10. Now, let's pretend Jim and Kate say, hey, we don't really like the $10 rule. We want to put our $10 together for Bob's birthday and give him a $20 gift. Can they do that? The answer, of course, is no. You can only do group gifts, as in employees getting together to give a gift for significant events. All right, so let's change this up. Kate and Jim can't give gifts to their boss 
or anyone above them, it's chain of command. How do you know they're in your chain of command? You look up. If they are 966 and this person is 900, both of those people are in your chain of command. Now, so let's pretend that Lisa, the superintendent, is retiring. That's probably the most notable exception for the sig significant event. So if Lisa is retiring, what can Bob, Jim, and Kate get together and do a group gift? The answer is yes. Why? Because retirement is a significant event. How do you know whether something is a significant event? Well, it's largely common sense. And it's easier for me to explain what is not a significant event. Boss's Day, birthdays, any holidays, including Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever, all of those, if they happen every year, which they do, are not significant events. Things that are significant events are retirement, uh, death in the family, things that you know are significant because they are. So, it's a significant event. Lisa is retiring. What can Bob, uh, Kate, and Jim do? Well, they can do a group gift. The max value you can solicit as an ask for for a group gift is $10. And it has to be completely voluntary. So Jim or Kate have to walk around and say something like, hey, Lisa's retiring. If you'd like to give 10 bucks for the gift, great. If you'd like to give nothing for the gift, that's great too. If you'd like to give less than 10, that's wonderful. None of the coercion of walking around and saying, you give $10 for this gift. Now, there is a max value on the gift going to a superior for a group gift. And that is 300 bucks. You cannot exceed for the group gift, $300. If the group giving the gift has any member of that person receiving the gifts, subordinates. So if there's a subordinate in the group, the max value is 300. Now, now Lisa's retiring, okay? She, this is her chain of command. It's pretty simplistic. So these folks can give a group gift with a max value of 300 and they can't solicit any more than 10. Now, let's pretend that there's another 15 superintendents up here, okay? They're, they are all friends with Lisa, okay? And they want to give her a group gift. None of them are subordinates of Lisa. Can they exceed the $300 threshold? And the answer is twofold. First, you got to determine whether this group of folks has a relationship that justifies the gift with Lisa? The answer to that would be, yeah, probably, because they're all friends. Okay, so if they are all friends and they have a relationship that justifies the gift, and none of them are subordinates of Lisa, then they can give a group gift that is worth greater than $300 of fair market value. So when you're choosing your group to give, give gifts, make sure that you don't have a subordinate in the group. That's key. Now with all these gift things, again, call me before you do it. I can help you out on the phone. I can tell you who to kick out of your group. I can tell you what you can do. It takes me a very short period of time to do this over the phone. All right, so Lisa gets her gift and uh, her retirement gift. Now we're gonna change it up and we're gonna pretend Lisa didn't retire. Now, over here in code 700, Here's code 700's chain of command. We have uh, Sarah. Woo, that's not very good. All right, so Sarah is a wage grade person. All right, she and Lisa are best of friends. They've known each other for 20 years. Now, Sarah wants to give Lisa a $100 fishing rod for her birthday. Can Sarah do that? The answer is yes, because look at the chain of command. Sarah's chain of command goes up through 700, then the CO's up here. Um, Lisa's chain of command goes up to the CO. Lisa is not above Sarah in the chain of command. So when Sarah gives a gift, gift to Lisa, that's the moment, there's no senior subordinate relationship, but you gotta worry about who makes more. And the answer is of course Lisa makes more. It's all done by hourly rate. Hourly rate for a superintendent is greater than an hourly rate for a wage grade person. So when Sarah gives a gift to Lisa, she has to have a reason for giving that gift. 
And the answer is, does she fall into the exception that covers a personal relationship that justifies the gift? Well, I already told you that. They're best of friends. So Sarah can give that $100 fishing rod to Lisa on Lisa's birthday. Furthermore, Lisa can also give Sarah a gift because Sarah, one, makes less money than her, and two, is not in her chain of command. She looks down, she's not there. Um, so they can exchange gifts. The problem arises, and it's common here at the shipyard, is that let's say Sarah's over here working in 700. Well, then she gets a job, she gets promoted, and she's working here as a zone manager in 900. So she's no longer in the 700 chain of command, she's moved over to the 900 chain of command. Now it's birthday season again. She wants to give Lisa a $100 fish and reel. Can't she do it? The answer is absolutely not, because though they may be best of friends, though they may be relatives, it does not matter. She cannot give her a gift because Lisa is her superior. Now you flip that, and if Lisa wants to give Sarah a gift for her birthday, she can't. The, gifts do, the rules do not prohibit Lisa, the superior, from giving the subordinate a gift valued at 10, greater than $10. So if Lisa takes uh, Sarah out to lunch and buys her lunch, a $50 lunch, she can do that. However, if you reverse it and Sarah tries to buy lunch for Lisa, she can't because Lisa is her superior. All right, a couple other things that you should know of before we stop here. One is the refreshments shared in the office exception. What's that mean? We're coming up into the holiday season. If you have a holiday party over lunch, everyone brings in a dish. The value of the dish doesn't matter as long as you're sharing that dish in the office, as in everyone else in the share office is sharing it. If you're cooking up lobster and bringing it in just to your supervisor, then it's a gift greater than $10 just to your supervisor, and you cannot do that. But if you're sharing it in the office, you can do that. That is pretty much it for gifts between employees, at least the bare minimum of that. If you have any questions, please give us a call at 396-8625. Call me before you do it, and I can answer your questions quickly. Thank you.